Hi, this is Amy Hoffer with Open Oregon Educational Resources, and I'm going to do a breakout session on how we collect and report on OER data. Um, people sometimes ask me, since there are 24 colleges and universities in Oregon, whether we do a consistent method of calculating student savings um, that are represented by the no cost and low cost designation in the um, schedule. And that would enable us to do an apples to apples savings comparison. And the answer is no, everybody sends me a different kind of fruit and I make a fruit salad out of that. So why am I okay with that? Um, the fact is that any way that you're gonna calculate your student savings is gonna result in an estimate, right? We'll never know everything that every faculty member is using in every class, students, um, purchasing behavior is really varied. So given that we're always going to be using numbers that are an estimate and really what we need to talk about is the impact on students of saving the money, um, we might as well let people use the method of calculation that makes the most sense locally. So the people that are um, creating and using the data should be the ones to determine what method is going to work best for them and is going to be the best fit for their available resources. So the thing is that I think that I can connect that approach to the kind of critical theory that um, it's overlapping frameworks that go by many names, but um, feminist theory, critical race theory, queer theory, post-colonialist theory, um, these interpretivist methods that say, hey, positivists, there's no objective reality out there. There are multiple valid truths that um, can accurately represent um, what's really happening on our campuses. So what I would love is for folks that have done more than scratch the surface on that kind of thinking, which is what I've done, to help me think through this and help me understand how um, the overlap can happen between these kinds of um, methodologies and how we collect and share our OER savings data. Thanks.